Hey everybody, it's Cauliflower Man here. I'm bringing you another gameplay of Battleborn. In this game, I've got two clips for you. The first clip is showing you how to win a game when you have a worse team. Um, you'll notice uh, this game doesn't actually go to a, a complete finish, and technically speaking, we lose the game, so it's not really a great video for it. Um, I'll show you us uh, coming back and taking the lead, taking a significant lead. Um, the enemy team we're playing here, they've got a great team set up. Uh, as you can see, we only have one healer, and uh, we don't really have a tank. Phoebe can play as a tank really well, but our Phoebe was kind of new. Um, I'm not saying she was bad at all. In fact, it was the Phoebe who was the one who played this game the way it needed to be played for us to win. Uh, the Phoebe plays super aggressive, and that's the way you have to do it. If you have a team that is a lot better than you, you have to play super aggressive, and whenever they give you an inch, you have to take a mile. And this Phoebe is going to do just that. And I don't know if the Phoebe is doing that just because she's sort of new and is just going all out because she, she's a new character, doesn't really know what she's doing. But that's what we needed her to do. So regardless of what, why that Phoebe was pushing so hard, you're going to notice later on the Phoebe almost is going to solo a sentry. And if the rest of the team would have followed suit and would have pushed with the Phoebe, then we could have taken out that first sentry and we could have had a chance at winning it. Um, but again, whenever you have an enemy team that is better than you, you have to play super aggressive. I'm not saying keep running forward and put yourself in stupid situations, but uh, whenever you have an opening, you have to take it. And like you can see right there, they're double stunning me, so they're, they've got a lot of coordination. If you look at their uh, team setup they've got two support it's really hard to beat a two support team we only have one support if your team has one support and the enemy team has two support even if you're way better than them you're going to be at a severe disadvantage so not only is this other team very good they're all good players but uh, we're at a severe disadvantage because of our team setup so we've got everything going wrong for us at the beginning here but as you can see when they killed me we were able to get a couple kills so we were able to take control and like I said this Phoebe is the one that's making the push the whole time and that's exactly what we need um, so another thing too that I guess I'll talk about is uh, you always with Miko you need to make sure everybody on your team is full health um, that's not necessarily just for pushing when your team is worse but whenever you play Miko if your team's not at full health you're not doing your job I see a lot of Miko's not healing until the, their teammates are almost dead and that's the worst thing you can do if you'll notice I start healing these people when they still have shields and they're at full health that's because I need that healing or I need to keep them at full health because they do far more damage than I do um, and then Again, you need to keep pushing, and the reason why you push is because when you get in this situation, you need to make sure that your enemies are not attacking your minions. If they attack your minions, you'll never put any damage on the sentry. So, as you can see, um, they took out our minions that way, but we were able to push them in super far, and we're still pushing them back, and I'm able to sit back and heal our people behind the enemy lines because the battle lines are at their sentry. We're not sitting back, we're not waiting for them, and that's one thing I see almost every team do when they're playing this game is they sit back and wait for the other team to make a mistake. Don't sit back, push back, get in their face, and then you'll usually freak the enemy team out. Like I said, this Phoebe's doing a great job. Um, another thing as a Miko, if your teammates get real weak, like my Phoebe just did, run in front of them and make sure that you take the damage rather than them. Um, and our Phoebe's doing a real good job of just keep pushing in there. She got a kill there. Uh, as you can see, our minions made it through, and so they, they got the uh, shield down on the sentry. And here's where our Phoebe starts doing exactly what we needed to do. The rest of the team is not attacking the sentry, but the sentry shield is down, and this Phoebe's going to take it down to um, around 60 health. If we would have had any help from the team, we could have taken out this sentry. But like I said, almost everyone who plays Battleborn plays like little girls. I love this Phoebe for playing super ballsy because that's what you need. The Phoebe's going to end up Dying. She probably should have ran away a little bit before, like right now, or a little bit before then. But uh, I would much prefer playing with somebody who's going to push so hard that they die right there. Because right now, we still have complete control. Um, I think I'm going to end up dying, which is going to kind of ruin it for us. But with that Phoebe dead by herself, that really wasn't a problem for us. Uh, so now let's go ahead and look at my uh, second video. This video is the reverse side of why you need to play super aggressive. It's not how to win against a better team. It's how to completely shut somebody down. Um, like I said before, the one thing that teams almost never do is they never push that sentry hard. Uh, you'll notice here, uh, what I'm going to do is whenever we get a push in there, I keep attacking it, or I keep attacking the sentry as Montana for the simple reason that uh, I need to keep its shield down. I have played with countless incredible teams, and I don't think I've ever played with one team that uh, makes a conscious effort 
to keep the shields down all you have to do is do I think it's like uh, it's got like a 10 second recharge delay for the sentry shields so just shoot it once within that 10 seconds and the shields are gonna stay down and that's how you kill a sentry and I don't know why nobody does this but um, it's completely essential and uh, if you start learning how to do that you'll kill enemy sentries when uh, the enemies don't think you have any sort of a chance uh, but again when you're playing this game, you have to play super aggressive. As you see, can see, I got really weak, but I didn't back up all the way. Uh, one reason I didn't is because I'm Montana. Montana has a huge amount of range, so you can't do that with all characters. But with Montana, if you just sit back, even when you're super weak, you're really not going to be in that much trouble. And as you can see, we already took out the shields on that sentry, and I put a little bit of damage on it. Um, so I've got a full 10 seconds until I'm going to have to go back and hit that sentry again before its shields come back. Uh, and so all I do at the start is I get those minions out of the way from a safe distance so they can't hit me. Nobody's hit the sentry yet. I put a few shots on it, make sure that its shields don't come back up. And as you can see, uh, once I have an opening, I lay down as much damage as I can. We've got an Isaac up here doing a huge amount of damage on it too, and we just punch it out. The one thing that you will you will notice, if you kill an enemy sentry super quick, you're going to see the enemy team try and quit out. You just demoralize them so quickly, and that's why you need to play aggressive. I hate playing Battleborn games to 30 minutes. If you're playing a Battleborn game and it lasts 30 minutes, usually it means you are not playing correctly. Um, there's sometimes in super competitive games where it will last the full 30 minutes, but that's very rare. Usually if it lasts the full 30 minutes, it means you're not playing as aggressive as you should be. Um, obviously, there's the flip side of that. If you play too aggressive, you're going to hand the uh, game over to the enemy team, but it's very rare that you see a team play too aggressive. It's almost always the case that they don't play aggressive enough. Um, and so, again... Uh, as you can see, we're only two and a half minutes into the game, and we've already got significant control in their first century's area. This is the way I love to play the game. This is the way you really need to do it. Um, and we keep pushing, and we keep pushing. Another thing that's real great here is I've got a super great Kid Ultra. Uh, I'm just going to throw this out here because I don't know why... Uh, it seems like 80% of people who play Kid Ultra, they don't throw the uh, sentry drone on the ground. They don't do the area of effect on level 2. Level 2, you need to, you absolutely must choose the right choice. Uh, I know if you watch my Helix guide, you'll say uh, you don't need to if you're one of the best Kid Ultras. I've only played with one Kid Ultra who is, I would say is good enough to th uh, not throw the uh, healers on the ground. And the only time you do that is if you have another healer. I hate, I absolutely cannot stand Kid Ultras who do not choose the right choice on level 2. If you're not going to choose the right choice, basically what I'm telling you is get off Kid Ultra. And again, right here, I just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. That's how you play the game of Battleborn. It's a game where you have to play aggressively. Obviously, I die right there, but we've got massive control. We've hardly been playing the game at all. And uh, this team, if they don't quit out, uh, they're going to get wrecked anyway ways because we've got such a level advantage and experience advantage on them um, that they just have no chance.